I wonder where closer ado is. Is that in Pennsylvania or in... I, I have not found that yet, but that's all right. Do you know, I've got a... Come on in, because we're just going to go wherever I'm supposed to go. I got a story for you. You know, I like stories. I, I seen this the other day. I'm going to give my version of it. You know, you probably all seen God is not dead. Or if not, let me just give you a short storyline that was in there that is a take from what I heard. There was this professor. He was in college, and he was, stood up very bold, and he said, you know, if God is real... Let him knock me down right now in this place. And all of his students gasped. He goes, oh, guess I showed them. These people that are in here even calling themselves believers. He sat down and he got back up and started instructing whatever the class was that he was doing. And he got going for a long time. Must have forgot about what was going on. All of a sudden, this big burly guy comes into his room, just decks him right there. And he goes, my, why did you do that? He says, well, it's like this. If God would have came and decked you, you would have been dead. So I came because he sent me. (laughs) You know... How do we look? This is a wonderful thing. For a long time now, maybe my entire life, I've lived by this one very, well, it just brought to my remembrance. It's game day. Um, Let me just explain this a little bit. Gosh, in this short three-year time frame and uh, of playing sports, I, it was preparation within that time. You know, when it's game day, you put on a different face. You have everything that was in you that is in you. And and if you are meant to play, you give more because of the game and not just sitting around. You know, the coach won't put you in. You may be in maybe one game and it may prove that you what you don't do or you don't have. Right. Yeah. Do you know, I, I realize this in... Uh, Sports and in, gosh, I used to tour with a Christian band for a number of years, that this is what I used to enjoy. I I enjoyed the preparation and because I knew what it was like to enter into the game. Let me go to this very, this is one part of, uh, well, let me just continue this here. We, We got to see game day on Wednesday. Do you know, this thing called grace is a very messy thing. I know when I played sports and uh, my grandmother, she'd be a little woman and she'd end up being in places where she wasn't supposed to be. We'd be at the goal line and I'd look up and she was hunkered over there looking at me and she says, Bobby, why are you on the bottom? I said, Grandma, I just happened to be first. (laughs) <laughs> to hit this person. But, but she would be there. It would be a very strange and neato thing that would occur. Do you know, it's game day, and we got to see and hear this. You know, it's going to get messy. This thing called grace, which occurs. The, the, gosh, religious people and the enemy has gotten in this thing called grace that don't understand. And if you are giving into the game, if you are in the flow of God, if you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you still mess up and you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. My, what a wonderful message that Bishop had about how the enemy comes in the day and said, yay, did God really say? Those butts, young men, you shouldn't be looking at butts. And and let me put it this way, young woman, you shouldn't be looking at butts neither. Do you know the reason that we're looking at butts? We're probably not doing and participating or being in the game. 
Yeah, because you're look, you're not in a dog sled race. Just a little behind. But hear this, I, I understand this, that I've accumulated through the years. It's in the play. It's in the doing. Now faith is. When do you need faith? In the game day. In the doing. Do you know, we're all going to make mistakes, but where is our heart? Let, let me go to this very one scripture. Uh, um, and I know where it's at. It's Romans 10. <laughs> Let me start with verse three. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You know, there, there is a flow, though. The wonderful thing that I enjoyed about playing football and basketball and touring in concert was, was the response that I got to participate in. There, there takes a, something that's called preparation to get you into this place to be able to respond. It's sad that when people have been trained by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that they never got to participate in the tree of life, which is knowing the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. In our getting, have we gotten the very thing that God really desires for us to get, which is life, knowing him. He is. Let me just go to this here. Verse 8, but what saith it? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which is preached. Do you know that why we should assemble is so that we will be prepared for a game day? When, when I met with my teammates, when I met with, uh, in practice, gosh, we, I remember when, or wherever we go, it should be in this preparation of faith. Does it bring you, does it prepare you for that day when you know that you have to come and bring the very thing which is salvation to someone else? Let me just read that verse 8 again. But what saith it? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. What are we preaching? Do we preach? Do we, do we give to someone the truth that may allow faith to arise? What is faith? It is substance. Is it just a good notion? Is it just a ticket to heaven? But no, it's knowing that he is. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. For they that come to him must know that he is, must know. You know, it's not just showing up in a building and saying, I'm here. But do you know, have you, have you experienced the sound of the wind? Have you experienced the touch of the wind? Have you experienced the manifestation of the wind? Who he is, Numa, that spirit, that life that he is. Do we come and do we do things religiously or do we truly come to prepare ourselves and even have game day, but it's a different animal when we're all by ourselves because when we assemble ourselves, we should be affecting someone else and building them up in like precious faith so that they may go out into their game day and do this very thing. 
that if you should confess this very word that comes in faith, if you should confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe with your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you surely, you shall be saved. For with the heart a man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, I think... My thinking sometimes gets back into the Appalachians or back into the over the hill hillbilly people, but they that call upon the name of the Lord. Well, you know, I remember in Melvin, Michigan, if you just visited your neighbor, you got in the paper. <laughs> so I called on my neighbor. Hey neighbor. Hey neighbor. And I made the paper. But what do you call on? Oh, I, I have need? Or do you call on? Do you visit the identity of he is? That's what someone else needs through our game day is to know the identity of he is. And you know, we're going to make mistakes. There's, there's this thing. It's going to be messy. Grace is a messy thing. Grace is doing that very thing. And you want to do good, but for whatever reason, the Apostle Paul even said this, I do what I don't want to do. But I'm in the path. I want to do. It, it's not that I, I want to, I'm going to live the way that I want to live and get the benefits of not living that way. That's stupidity. Because that's not what God has said. Because the very thing, the reason that the Christ had came, had come so that we would enter into this, which is being, he is, through him. We're taking on the identity. We're taking on the name. We're coming in the name of the Lord in game day. And how do we prepare for that? Other people prepare differently. Do you know that out of how many, you know, uh, members on my team, I play different than everybody else, and I'm glad that they, they're probably all glad that they did. There were people that did not want to go against me in practice for that reason. In the preparation, is a powerful thing. And let me get to this very point. Do you know... You will not know salvation unless you confess him. What's the game about? Do you yourself on game day confess the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe with your heart that God has raised him from the dead? And do you confess it to someone else? Have you entered into salvation daily? Because it comes both ways. With my heart, I believe. Gosh, the most powerful thing that a man could have is his heart. I have seen this. It's not the size of the man, but the size of the heart in the man that causes a fight. I know that I've come against, gosh, people in, in that very short time that they were bigger than me, they might have been faster than me, but through my preparation... I learned how to overcome. I learned to play the game, and I enjoyed it. And the game caused me the desire to want to go to play another game. A concert, when I went, I gave everything that there was. You ask my wife, she did my laundry. <laughs> She was, my, she was our best roadie. I tell you what, she used to move these humongous bass bends. They were, they, we, had, we had roadies, and God, half the time I never seen them. You know? But my wife carrying, and, and let me put it this way, all my children were the mascots up until the last child she was pregnant with. So that's how long uh, 
I was touring with this group. But then my wife, being with child, carrying children, got them involved, and she played the game. She knew what her part was, and if nobody else was going to do it, I'm going to do it. If there was nobody else that was going to believe, would you do it? When you pick somebody up with your, with your vehicle and you're driving someplace, is it that game day that you get the opportunity to yourself enter into salvation by confessing the lordship of Jesus Christ and that because that the Father, the Spirit of the Most High God has raised him from the dead, something occurs in us that we get raised from the dead and we get to go on to a greater life. We get to go on to pronouncing this very thing that's called life. So do you, on your game day, Do you show up to play, or do you just put on a uniform? Do you know that there were, I made a lot of upperclassmen very upset with me, and I remember one time they they decided to jump me in the, when, when you play on varsity, you get to move into the varsity locker room, but unfortunately, I got jumped by upperclassmen. There was only a very few of us that got to join into that place, and one day, That's what occurred. People that are not playing, they'll try to equalize you. Unless you take up, unless you take up your cross. What is, you know, the the most, and this is talking about your, your mother will be against you and your father will be against you and your children will be against you and, Yeah, laugh out loud, Reverend Mark. And people will point fingers at you. Do you know that the hardest thing on that walk to Golgotha was probably having to carry that cross? Because the people that you, that the Christ ministered to, that the anointed one, the God is salvation and manifest in the earth, he had to walk carrying a cross, being beaten, And the people that, that were supposed to be the religious leaders, they pointed their fingers at him and said, who is this? Ha, huh, look at him now. But you know why I learned this? No matter, I didn't care what anybody else played like. But if I gave my best, even if we lost, I knew that I played to the potential that I was created for. And you know what? Manifest, eventually, people see that in me. I believe that even, you know, do you know that King David, he did this very thing. When he was a child, he says, I'm going to do my best. My dad just tells me, he, he wanted me to go look after these sheep. My brothers weren't doing it. So I figured maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's possible that his older brothers didn't, weren't doing it, and so dad sent him out to do it. Yeah, probably, because I remember on days that we'd have um, ice storms or whatever, I, I got the dirty work. You know, I, had, I got to thaw out some stuff. I got to move things that froze quickly from one place to another, but that's, that's all right. But you learn. Do you know that in your life, the things that occur in your life prepare you for the game day? Do you take advantage of it? Do you take advantage of it? David, he just decided that he wasn't going to let the sheep be destroyed by a lion or a bear. Spoke of how he, he accumulated it for himself. Do you know, you, you didn't hear him just like Joseph said, hey, do you know what I've done, brothers? You weren't heard it, but his brother, his brothers probably knew about it, but wanted to keep it hidden. This thing called character, or what you do, or or how you prepare for game day, for the day that you get to allow 
what you were created for to appear. Joseph being thrown in a pit. My brother threw me down a seven-foot coal bin, no coal in it, in a wagon one time. I, I says, boy, I, Joseph, I can relate to you. But this word is so wonderful. Do you read your word? Do you prepare for this? I can see what's going on, and I can apply it to myself. Jesus spoke. He went to the temple, and he began to, he began to read I like to say this from the Gospel of Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah, this is the reason why I come. To be, to bring light. To raise the heads that are low, to preach the acceptable day of the Lord. And people gawked, but he knew who he was. Do you read and do you Know this, this is all about me. Bishop, thank you for the days of the Lord. In the beginning was created this very purpose that salvation was seen from the foundation of the world. If you can even look, and it takes training and preparation, you'll find the word of the Lord that you, it is about you and how you can apply it on your game day. But do we look for it? Or are we expecting someone else to tell me? Yeah. You don't know him personally. Is He is. Gosh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and there was nothing that was not created by him that was created. Do you allow this Word to make it personal to you? Do you meet with him and have yada? Do you have this personal time where he is. This is not a hard thing. This is just in preparation. So I went and I played in this, this one game and there's this, I, I, I was supposed to be, he was a couple of years, and Mark, uh, Reverend Mark knows this gentleman. He was a couple of years older than me and he was uh, um, all everything. And I was just a sophomore but it's a funny thing that in my preparation, in my love for the game, this is a powerful thing. For my love for the game, I naturally, I looked for things or looked for ways to fulfill what my call was in my life. I knew what my call was on defense was to get that quarterback. This this gentleman that was a very large man, he could not touch me. And I had this understanding. It wasn't for me to make contact with you. It was for me to make contact with your quarterback. What do we hear that are butts that keep us from fulfilling the call that we have? Are we looking at the butts again? Or... Do we concentrate? My, back to Psalm 1, which is a very powerful thing. I will not walk in the way of the ungodly or stand, yes, stand in the way of the ungodly or take counsel in that. I know it. It's just a lot of things going on right here. Or stand in the way of the sinner or sit in the seat of the scornful. Forgive us, Father, when we just sit there and say, I know it, and I'm not going to do anything about it. But they that meditate upon the word, the Torah. You know, the word of God is a powerful thing. This very thing that is from New Testament is just testifying of what the Old Testament will do. There had to be a death so that we can so that we can be heirs of the very promises that God had for us in the beginning. Do we take our place? Or are we waiting for somebody else to hand us what we deserve? My. There are many people that are living that way. But the very powerful thing that we can give them are, is this very truth, this very word, which brings faith. 
If anything that we have, because the word that was spoken over me from from uh, the prophet was rebuild. You know, I understand. I, I I go into play day or into game day at my job work. You, you know, I, I started probably in high school and I began to enter into game day and something very powerful occurred when I understood the power in um into moving in game day, everything followed in that same heart. With your heart, you believe unto righteousness. What do you give? Someone else's heart? Do you give who you are? Do you prepare? Do, uh, do we give? out of the abundance of heart. You know, I learned this. And that very token, I I, I began to do this even in uh, my job. You know, I wasn't supposed to be an engineer, but I'll just tell you some stories. That I just happened to be sitting in with one of high school coaches during, um, I had nothing better to do. I took two years of, I had more than I should of my credit hours fulfilled in high school before I was a senior. And so I took, I decided that I was going to take some graphic arts. I was going to go to the career center and do this. I'm, I created and I fulfilled two years of uh, that class in six months and I had nothing to do other than so I was making things, I was doing things just because. I was talking and, and I think my daughter has this, this gentleman's uh, uh, job now. But I was talking to him about playing football at the college where, you know, I, I had a free ride and it happened to be where he was going. And all of a sudden he got a phone call saying, hey, there's, a, there's this, he just started speaking about people could fulfill this position at this business as a draftsman. I just heard that and I says, well, gosh, I happen to be in the right place at the right time. I can do this. I have nothing better to do. I think I will apply. So I went, and they said, you know, you've got the job. I think I had the shortest interview that it was there. You've got the job, but I have to interview a whole bunch of other people. That's fine. So I was there for a little while, and it didn't stop from there. I got laid off because of gas gas. Uh, crisis. They were making motorhomes where I was doing, and I happened to be in engineering there. And I was doing this. I was in high school. I started when I was 17 years old doing what I've been doing now. But I think our footsteps are ordered by God. And so have you taken through the things of your life, just as Joseph, just as just as Samuel, just as the, these that are in this word, do you look in and say, how can I take my place? I'm not going to try to do it somebody else's way. I, I don't play the same way as everybody else. And, do you know, I don't expect you to play the same way that I play. But I found this, that what I do, just as that young man came into the, to the classroom and decked the the professor, I come that day to do what God has told me to do. If it's to deck somebody, well, I, I, I got a story for this. I'm sitting at work one time, and this is a couple of years ago, and the CEO of the company that I did contract work for, said, I said, well, I'm going to be gone for two months. I'm going to Vietnam. And I'll be there, and I'll do what I'm, do, what I'm going to be doing, so I'll be working from there. And he says, no, you're not. I says, I'm sorry, but God has called me to, to do what I do. All of a sudden, a cloud came into the room, and he was on the ground. I mean, my, you wanted me to see this, huh? He, he could not look me in the eye. I, I, I went to Vietnam. But I've seen a many of other things. I, you know, I'm in Vietnam one time, and I'm preaching the gospel. My wife is with me, and she's praying in the Spirit. 
And there's this guy that just happens to be drunk and he's just all around the place trying to disturb what God was doing. You know, I got so angry that I almost got up and ducked him. But I said not. I, I, I go, oh, because, you know, I really didn't want a, a, a prison ministry right then. Yeah, that was it. So I'm praying in the Spirit while I'm preaching. It's going on, it's going on. Then all of a sudden, there's this guy that he was doing time because he got in trouble with the law. And he's doing coochie. And he sees this guy, and he's, all, he's a ways away. He gets up, walks over, and he decks the guy. The guy's out in the bushes. So I said, thank you, Father. I'm glad that you took care of this. Do, are, are we in preparation to knowing that God will do things? Are, are we in the place? Uh, yeah, it's going to get messy. And you know you're not going to have it done perfectly. But as, are you going to try are you going to bring the gospel to someone? Are you going to speak the truth? This is a wonderful and powerful thing because if you bring the truth, if you bring this very thing that causes someone to rise up in faith, the power of Christ has been completed because it's not just a religious doing. I just not, did not say, you know, in your spirit, have you asked God to you know, to come in your life. Have, have you, did, did you find, thank you very much because you know what? I lost that and I'm glad I didn't get that again. The funny thing is, did, did, did you find Jesus? Yeah. Was he, was he lost? Yeah. Have you met him yet? Do you know a wonderful, powerful thing in through my preparation, in in the times that I, even in through the years, I have learned this, that I'm going to play my game no matter what somebody thinks. I continually, Bob, I, you know our prayer together? This is Bob from Marysville. Buffalo Bob, I'll just call you that. Do you know I could tell when you prayed that after that, that we spoke that, your, that there was a peace that was about you? There is salvation that comes from sharing the gospel with someone else. Can you confess? This is salvation. If you do not confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe with your heart, confess with your mouth that God has raised him from the dead, you yourself have not entered in to salvation. It is very possible that you're just speaking words from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and have not taken on who you've been called to be, which is to play the game, which is equip yourself. Do you know that equipping myself, I have learned that I give. I have learned that I pray. I learned that I read this wonderful thing called the word, because this word is who I am. This salvation is who I am. This is a very true, this, Romans 10.10 10 is who I am. And I'm excited. I get excited going wherever I go. And you know, please forgive me that I do not give you uh, missionary stories every time that we meet. And if you desire this, I will surely do that. My heart lately is, gosh, how can I give you tacos? How can I give you these words of faith that cause you to rise up and not listen to the, the devil? That you may go out and have a wonderful game day because I've learned this, this thing called joy. No matter what you go through, no matter how you may get beat up in the game, if you're playing your best, you'll want to play again. No matter on how anybody else plays, you'll rise up and say, oh, I get the opportunity to play. When we were touring, there were bands that asked me to come and play with them. Why? I don't know. They, I, for whatever reason, they just like me. They like my hat. Oh, I, 
I was, I failed at this. I, I have another one. I was going to put on another hat. I got a black one now. I got, yeah. I gave away this one. And you know, that, that's the very thing. In the, in the 80s, I, I used to, to wear this uh, red beret. And many people, we used to, I used to take people out on outreach. And we, one time we went and took a, a, our band and some youth on an outreach down someplace in Detroit area. But it was at this carnival. Started preaching and walking around. And they thought I was, what's that? Guardian angels. In the 80s, there was a, a group that were a, poli a local police or, or um, neighborhood watch or, or kind of like that. But they were given permission to do wonderful things that caused um, neighborhoods to be watched. They thought I was part of the guardian angels. We pull up into this thing. Office, I, I, I was there at the... Um, one friend's house, and he was, um, Mark, the keyboardist, he was supposed to play for a wedding. All of a sudden, God, the, the wind moved, and I started reading this man's book. And he goes, wow, how did you know this? And the, the lady that he was marrying was trying to keep him from responding But the powerful thing there, and we went and we met, and carnies were getting saved. Gangs, whole gangs were getting saved. There were female gang members. There was a gang of girls. They were all come up, and they were pretty well, they looked like they just got done being in a fight. They were, well, anyways. The whole gang gave their heart to the Lord. Then I met these guys that were in a gang. They gave their hearts to the Lord. The carnies were giving their hearts to the Lord. There's this guy with, yeah. Do you know that I, that I know this, and I'm going to say this, but my time was, you know, in, they, people need to hear your missionary stories. I, I, I've given my missionary stories. My children were raised, you, you all, you all were in children's church with me. You've heard this all. You've, you know that I lay hands on you and you feel the presence of God. That same power, that very same thing that you have seen as you were growing up. Do you know in adolescence you have this very opportunity that I get to submit what I see? Children, obey. And that's a powerful thing. If you got children, if you can learn, if you can uh, raise them up and show them by the love of God, by the movement of that wind to cause that life to bring them, not a, a, a demanding upon them, but this very thing through faith to cause them to desire to obey, not just to do it by the word of knowledge of good and evil. But how do you speak? With your children, you have a game day. How are you moving? At your work, you have a game day. Wherever you go, you have a game day. And you know, I realize this. I, I don't respond in the same way every place. Because the game was different. I understood this. The concert was different. I, you know, I, I giggle every time that I, we do a venue. Sometimes we have these huge venues, and I get the worst place in the entire house. There was no sound there. But then I would, I didn't care. I would give. I didn't care who I was playing against. I knew that I was going to give my best. One story, you probably heard me say this. Uh, gosh, a couple of years ago, I just felt like going up town and play basketball. There was three youth that were there, two young men and a young lady, and they were playing hoops, and I heard them say, maybe this old guy, maybe he want to play. I started laughing. I says, you know, yeah, I started laughing. I says, you know, you might beat the fat guy, but the old guy's been winning longer than you are old. So we would shoot for teams, and, you know, I, I chuckle and I says, this is great. 
Me and this young lady were on teams. We played five games of, to five, and the two young men had not scored at all. So I laughed at this. So a six-year-old and a girl beat you. How does that work? And it was not to take anything out. I, I, here's this. If you can find the gift that's in somebody else, the game day will come wonderful because it will help them cause that which is inside of them to score. There is faith in all people because I've seen this. God said, be. Do we activate that? In our walk, do we, do we think that it's game day that we want to be called just right? I'm doing this because I'm right. Or do we want to see this God, this word, this, that which was planted in them, this measure of faith to increase that they would know that he is. And in that, we take place. We do and we be. A powerful thing is this, Revelation 3 and 5. Let me just turn that really quick. Bishop said, you know, Matthew 10, 33, all those, those things, do you bring that to your remembrance? If you don't confess the Lord Jesus Christ, how can I confess you? Here's a, power, yeah, here's a powerful thing. To they that overcome, my, to, to they that overcome, Revelation 3 and 5, he that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Do you know, I've obtained this very thing. I spoke this on prayer on Wednesday. But you know, when you put on salvation, uh, here, let's just say this. I want to put on salvation. Uh, I'll say it. I, I want to put on salvation. Oh, uh, That's good. Do you know, putting on salvation is this. I'm going to confess the Lord Jesus Christ. When I do this, do you know that the enemy, that very but that it's talking about here, you, you don't really have to do that. Just tell them, have you come in your sp spiritual life to whatever that means? There is a spirit that's talking to people. But have they, have they witnessed he is? Have they witnessed Shannon and Tom, the people that are around you, you, you know that you're moved by the words of faith. The very words, does that come up? I, it doesn't matter to me if you repeat the very thing that someone else says, but is it in your own heart? If it is, my, someone can't stop because they'll know that in your heart, by that same token, Keith, that when I spoke to you, I knew that God spoke to you about that very thing about receiving faith. There's a day that is coming and is very shortly when all will be judged. Have we taken and have we prepared in this? And you know, the enemy may come to you very quickly and say, oh, just, just say this very thing, Jesus is Lord, and so God will confess this to you. But do you know the world knows if it's from your heart or you're not? Do you, do you know that the, your eyes are the windows to your soul? I can tell. God has placed me, and I've been able to, within my many game days, that I've been able to preach to CEOs of of businesses, 
people in the workplace, and I can tell by looking in their eyes when they're not receiving. I can tell when I lay hands on people, why are you here? But there's a powerful thing when you give your heart. When you give your heart to whatever God has here. If a man has my commandments and keeps them, keeping takes heart. It's he that loves me and I shall love him and so shall my father and I will manifest myself. That's a powerful thing. Because if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord, if you believe with your heart that God has raised him from your head, from the dead, and you can't help, but something else may come out, but it will speak salvation because your heart will believe and you will know because of the eyes what's in a man's soul will speak and you will hear the wind. We get to respond. We get to allow the presence that he is, that our response, that I take on salvation so that I may speak salvation, that someone may receive salvation, that they may speak salvation. I'm going to wrap this up with this. All right. And they that endure to the end shall be saved. Are you, once you figure out how to prepare for game days, do you lo- is it because you love the game? You know, do, do, do you, today, I say that I love you, but is it in the, the getting for myself? Or do you enjoy the game? Have you taken that place where you does have you realized that gosh, this is an adventure? Sharing this, I get to, I get to bring, I get to allow God to speak. I get to allow his touch. I go in the countries and I and this will speak. If you allow me, God will speak to you in this. I'm going to lay my hands on you and you will feel the presence of God because it'll be this. It'll run from your head down to your toes and it'll be like nothing else that you've ever experienced. But God wants you to know that he loves you enough that he wanted to manifest his word in his touch. If you need healing, he will heal you. If it's just to know that he is, that is a powerful thing. What you do with it, what you do with it will determine what your next game will look like. Let me just ask this very question. When did, when did David become king? Exactly. Do you know that I happen to believe that God knew this was a man after my own heart, even when he was out there tending dad's sheep? Why? Because he had game. I'm going to be obedient. Just happened to be that something occurred after God had touched. He was already in position. He had already moved himself into a place that when he was touched, a different different mantle rose up on him but he was moving in that same place. Here's, this is my last very note. You know, take notes. But you know, in game day, you're not going to have notes. So is the word, yeah, is the word life in your life? Yeah, I like that one. Thank you for sharing that, I I believe why I'm here is because I've had game days and I've been equipped. I've I've received faith through your word, sir. Thank you. Even though people don't know what's going on in my daily thing, you you know, after a while, when you have game, 
You, you, you take on a different thing. You, you're not so bragging on what God is doing in your life, but you're just, you're enjoying the game. You're enjoying that I'm able, I'm in it. I see salvation. I think somebody else should be part of this. And so forgive me that I have not shared any, of, any more of my missionary tales of my daily. Forgive me. G- G- I'll create new ones. But, you know, not keeping it to myself. For this reason, I, you know, I never, I felt funny. I want to confess this. I felt funny because it's not what people need to see on who I am but because of who he is. He's allowed me to speak into people daily. You know, my my new stories is this, and people won't understand it. I can see in your eyes. I can see in your eyes. I can see faith moving in people's lives. Chris Watts, the reason why you, you had joined up, you're here today because you see faith. You've entered into another place that you want to give, that you are moving and you are allowing game day to occur, that the words of faith, the words of life, this words of, that was in the beginning, that it will begin. Father, I thank you. Praise you for today. I thank you that people, it's game day wherever we go. Let's make a mess. In sports, I made a mess. Most of the time, it was somebody else. But my flesh went through some pretty difficult things too. But Father, I thank you that even when we're in the flesh, there is that prayer, forgive me, for I was in the flesh. I made some damage But I thank you that you're faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all my unrighteousness. I thank you that you you have prepared in our lives this very powerful thing that we may go into all the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. Casting out demons, laying hands on the sick, professing the acceptable day of the Lord, submersing them in the name, in the identity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we give you great thanks that today you are doing a new thing and you are allowing life for those that have a new game day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, an incredible thing that occurs in this, Bishop, you have something, that's fine. You know, by that same token, in my game day, I, I know this. I, I know the incredible thing about impartation. I can't give you my heart, but the heart that is in here will do something that will confirm that moved upon your heart today. If you desire a touch from he is, I I will gladly release. It will speak. It will speak because you will know that I've entered in my place. And because of my heart, I will do, I will be whatever my Lord wants me to be. I will have game. I will enter into my game for this purpose, that someone else may know faith, that they may know that he is. So if you desire a touch from him, you're welcome to come up. If if you have a desire to be healed, gosh, that's a wonderful thing. I'll lay hands on you. You'll be healed. Don't, Don't mess around. You know, it's a response. Do you know game day is a response? You, you should come prepared in the beginning. You know, I used to begin in the morning before the game and used to prepare for the game. Knowing, being excited that I'm going to enter into something that is a wonderful experience. It's an adventure. If you want an adventure with God, I 
I can lay hands on you. I can pray for you. 